going to talk about and show you some examples, some of which is review and some of which is new information as it pertains to moles, molarity, and solution concentration. So just a refresher from what we learned about in the past couple of weeks. I know it's been a very interrupted time. We learned that a mole is just a numerical amount of matter, sort of like a dozen describes 12. And the more moles you have of something, the more stuff you have. Now the mass of a mole depends on the components of that matter. So what elements are in the mole? Now how many moles are in the matter? So if we look at CH4, which is methane, we see that there is one carbon and four hydrogen. The atomic mass of carbon is 12 and hydrogen is one. So if we multiply the number of atoms by their atomic mass, we get 12 and four. So the molar mass of carbon is 16. So just a reminder, so if we do something like H2O, we want to be multiplying the molar mass of each element, so H and O, by the number of elements in that compound or molecule. So we have two hydrogen, which will each weigh one, and oxygen, which weighs 16, and we have one of that, the molar mass is then going to be equal to 18 grams, which this G is going to stand for, over moles. So you always want to look at the chemical formula, break it down in terms of the number of atoms in that molecule, and also their relative weight. I'm going to select this and clear it for our next problem. So new information that we're going to be talking today is about sol solutions and molarity. Now solutions like lemonade or hot cocoa or coffee or anything that you might consume is really a relationship between solutes, which are things that we dissolve in solvents, usually water, but also things like oil if you're dealing with salad dressing. Now, if you've ever had good hot chocolate or bad hot chocolate, you know that the concentration of the solution really depends on the ratio of solute to solvent. So you go to the hockey game and you get really cheap, bad hot cocoa. It's probably because they barely put any hot cocoa mix in. Well, at home, when it's you making the hot cocoa, you can put as much as you like. So this can be super rich and chocolatey. To determine the molarity of any solution, we're going to be looking at the moles of solvent in the liters of solution. We're going to be dividing moles of solvent by liters of solution. So if I go to my sketch pad, let's say I had a hot, ch I'm going to be looking at hot chocolate. So let's say I had three moles of hot chocolate, which the HC stands for hot chocolate. I want to know what the molarity concentration is going to be for two liters of water. I would simply divide three by two and I would get a 1.5 big M for my concentration of hot chocolate. Let's say though I went to some sporting event where they always rip you off and they decided to keep the two liters of water but they only put in one mole of hot chocolate, then suddenly you're dealing with 0.5 molarity of hot chocolate and it's probably gonna be pretty awful. So to find molarity of solutions, you're just gonna be dividing the moles of your substance by the liters of your solvent. Now, a lot of you probably remember from bio last year that there's an application of different solution concentrations. And that's what we talk about when we talk about diffusion and osmosis. So generally solutions with higher amounts of solvents or lower amounts of solutes tend to have water move into them. And we call that movement, whoops, talk about french fries in a minute, osmosis. Water tends to move from low concentration to high concentration to bring balance. So some of you have, might have drank or had some of the following solutions which have a stronger molarity than your blood when it comes to salts, 
such as IV drips or Gatorade or Pedialyte, and those all have higher concentrations of salts to help your body retain more water in your blood. So when we have a higher amount of salts in your blood, you can hold more water. And this helps with assisting things like dehydration, whether due to illness or injury or playing sports. Higher molarities will have water move into them from lower molarities. So that's going to be useful for our lab, which we'll talk about more today, which is going to be figuring out how do you have really crisp fries versus really sad, boring French fries. I don't know about you, but if I look at the French fries on the left, they look far more appetizing than French fries on the right. We'll be talking today about how we can use molarity, osmosis, and moles to help us. And if you need help with the math, just again, send me an email, send me a message in the Google Hangout, but hopefully this video was helpful for you remembering these basic ideas.